Now welcome to this video we're looking at uh, salts and electrolysis C2.5 and we're now on uh, section 3 making salts from solutions. Now then so section D from the AKA syllabus says insoluble salts can be made by mixing appropriate solutions of iron so that a precipitate is formed. What we're talking about is something that drops out of solution. So unlike copper sulfate which is clear and blue in water and dissolved we're looking at something that does not dissolve. You need to be able to name the substances needed to make a named insoluble salt as a generic example. So like from one of the ones we look at in a minute. Now, the particular salt produced in any reaction between an acid and a base or alkali, remember alkalis are bases but they dissolve in water, depends on the acid used. So hydrochloric acid produces chlorides, nitric acid produces nitrates and sulfuric acid produces sulfates and the metal in the base or alkali. So what's the original metal you used? What's the acid you used? That determines what we produce in the end because it kind of makes sense. What goes in must come out even if it's in a slightly different form. The second part is thinking C from the specification ammonia dissolves in water to produce what's called an alkaline solution so that's the base but it's a special type, isn't it? It's soluble and is used to produce ammonium salts. And ammonium salts are important as fertilizers. So most of the food you've eaten has been due to the use of these fertilizers. Now, oh, so when an acid reacts with an alkali, a neutralization reaction takes place. An example of a neutralization reaction is the reaction between hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide, so HCl plus NaOH gives you NaCl, sodium chloride, and water. Now another way of thinking about neutralization is in terms of what's happening between the ions in the solutions where H plus ions react with OH minus ions to form water. So H plus aqueous in water plus OH minus aqueous in water form water effectively. So the two combine to form water. So <clears throat> simple and obvious maybe but acid and alkali plus UI, when we react an acid and an alkali together we need to know when the acid and the alkali have completely reacted. We use an indicator for this since a strong acid and strong alkali produce a neutral solution when they've reacted completely. So you can have a strong acid plus a strong alkali, so blue and red go together to form green. And you could do a very simple experiment where you take an acid and you pour it into an alkali and you have a liquid version of the UI and when the UI is green you know you've neutralized. You can do a slightly more accurate one with a burette and do a titration. Now ammonium salt set. Long word, we do need to work out how to spell that. It's double M uh, mon, so double A double M, so mon -ium, so ammonium salts. By reacting an acid and alkali together, the ammonia reacts with water to form ammonium hydroxide of a weak alkali. Now ammonia is nasty stuff. It absolutely reeks. Very dangerous. You should be very careful sniffing it in um, very high concentrations. So ammonia plus water makes ammonium hydroxide. Now take the ammonium hydroxide and it reacts with an acid. <coughs> For example nitric acid. So here we have nitric acid, and uh, we've looked at that formula before, it's complex and we don't need to know a lot of detail, just need to be able to write it out or write the word equation for it. So acid plus the alkali, the ammonium hydroxide, makes a salt, ammonium nitrate, in solution, plus water. Now ammonium nitrate contains a large amount of nitrogen. Clearly, look, there are two there in the molecule, and it's very soluble in water. This makes it an ideal as a source of nitrogen to replace the nitrogen taking up from the soil by plants as they grow. Now, here's an example of making an insoluble salt that we talked about previously. <coughs> we can sometimes make salts by combining two solutions. When this makes an insoluble salt, we call the reaction a precipitation reaction because the insoluble solid that is formed is called a precipitate. It's like rain. Rain is called precipitation because it falls out of the sky and hits the ground. So in a similar way, let's look. Lead, nitrate, so we've got one lead, which is two plus, and then a nitrate molecule, but two of them, because each nitrate is NO3 minus one, isn't it? So two of them make a, 
um, minus 2, which balances the lead. So that goes into solution. So the lead and the nitrate ions split apart. The sodium chloride, NaCl, also dissolves, splits apart, Na plus Cl minus. And then they come together because of their reactivity on the reactivity series. So some are more reactive than others, clearly. And the lead forms with the chloride, because chlorine is quite reactive. Okay, So you get a precipitate, the solid lead chloride and you get sodium nitrate in solution. And they float about, so although we write it as NaNO3, we could write Na plus and NO3 minus and have two of each, but it's simpler to write it like that, which is, which is kind of misleading. Now the equation for the action shows that the lead chloride that forms is insoluble in water and forms that precipitate that we filter off. Now here's an, an example of lead iodide. Okay, it's a dead simple one. So potassium iodide and lead nitrate solution, so they mix together, okay, and they form a precipitate of lead iodide that forms and is filtered off, and then the precipitate is washed, distilled with water and dried. Now we can make lead iodide crystals from lead nitrate solution and potassium iodide solution. And the equation of reaction is shown at the top of the page, or actually here in fact. So what does a lead chloride look like? Well, it's a, it's a solid. You can clearly see there's something precipitated out. So PB, NO3, two, with two groups again, two potassium iodides, one lead iodide, and look, there are two there, aren't there? Two iodines, so I have to double my potassium iodide to balance it. And here we've got two potassium NO3s, because again, if I've put a two here, I have to put a two here, and of course, though, we've got two NO3 groups because we originally started with two. So that's an example of an insoluble salt. So we've got copper sulfate, which is a soluble salt. It dissolves in water, but this is insoluble. And you've just got to learn it for your GCSE. Now, using precipitation, well, <clears throat> we can very cleverly use the idea of precipitation to remove pollutants from wastewater from factories and industrial parts before the effluent is discharged into rivers and seas. An important precipitation reaction is the removal of metal ions from the water that have been used in industrial processes. So by firstly raising the pH of the water, we can make insoluble metal hydroxides precipitate out of solution. So they react and they drop to the bottom. Then you get our nasty sludge, which then we remove from the solution and the cleaned up water is discharged safely into a river or sea. Now although ammonium nitrate, and here's an example of ammonium nitrate, 33.5% nitrogen in there, uh, ammonical nitrogen here and nitric nitrogen here, all mixture of different ones, <coughs> although it's used as a fertilizer, it's also an explosive when mixed with other chemicals. And it was used in a terrorist bomb in Oklahoma City in 1995, which killed 169 people. So it can be used in, in bombs as well as for good stuff. So it's just having a think about, it's, an, it's a use of precipitation by adding acid, pH of the what we rate, sorry, alkali, alkali, sorry, acid. We raise the pH of the water. So, um, reference salt then. You need to have a think about um, all the soluble ones and all the insoluble ones. So all nitrates are soluble, that's easy. Most sulfates except silver, barium, calcium and lead. You've got to learn that. Most chlorides, bromides, iodides except silver chloride, silver bromide, silver iodide, lead chloride, lead bromide, lead oxide, which is sort of similar to this here. Soluble. Most of the carbonate, sulfate and sulfites are insoluble except those of sodium, potassium and ammonium. And insoluble, most other hydroxide except sodium, potassium, and ammonium. Now, a good way is to have a look at the table and then test yourself on GCC bite size. And that ends this video for today.